we have a very engaged committee, concise questions and concise responses with the uh, helpful uh, Senator Pratt. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. I, I want to quote uh, <coughs> briefly from a, a document from the Ontario Human Rights Commission. It says, some people may not know how to determine what pronoun to use. Others may feel uncomfortable using gender neutral pronouns. Generally, when in doubt, ask a person how they wish to be addressed. Use they if you don't know which pronoun to, is preferred. Simply referring to their person by their chosen name is always a respectful approach. So you can use a pronoun, you can, choose, you can use their chosen name. So if someone chooses to change his name from Paul to Peter, Surely you would use Peter because it's a matter of simple politeness and, and respect. If the same person, person chooses to cha cho change her name from Paul to Paula, well, well, I won't use, you use the name Paula simply as a matter of respect. What's the difference well, well, here? Well, I guess the issue, at, and, and speak about the legal issue there, is that you're now introducing the full force of the law behind the requirement to use and I'm dealing obviously with, with respect to the pronoun issue. In terms of not addressing somebody by their by their legally registered name, for instance, um, uh, I don't think that's where we're running into trouble here. I think the issue becomes that if you don't address somebody by the, uh, the pronoun that they self-identify by, as I've read out to you, the fact that the full force of the law will be behind uh, that person, um, that that's what I, I'm uh, finding is tro troubling in the legislation. But the Ontario Human Rights Commission gives Per people the alternative not to use pronouns and use the person's chosen name, which is always a respectful approach. So pronouns are not necessary, are not mandatory. You can always choose the person's chosen name as a respectful approach. And therefore, I argue... I, I'm not aware that anybody, that there is a, um, a piece of legislation that compels you to use my proper name. In other words, um, it, once again, it's the yeah. fact that the full force of the law will be behind it when we're dealing with the, the group being identified in the legislation. And so, for instance, if I were not to call you by your chosen name, I'm not sure you'd enjoy the full force of the law behind you uh, um, as a result of that. And that's what I'm suggesting to you is the difference here. I'm just arguing, sir, that you always base whatever you say on what the Ontario Human Rights Commission is saying. And I'm quoting from the Ontario Human Rights Commission document. They're saying we're not manda mandating pronouns. You can always use the person's chosen name as a respectful approach. I respectfully then, disagree. But then, well, I would say then that's actually an indication of just exactly how poorly the policy documents are written because I can quote this one, which, which is also from the Ontario Human Rights Commission website, that says, and I quote, refu refusing to refer to a person by their self-identified name and proper personal, uh, proper personal pronoun counts constitutes gender-based harassment. And so if, there, if the policies were written in a coherent manner and there wasn't internal contradictions, then your statement would be a reasonable objection. But since it's not written that way, and I do believe firmly that that's a testament to the, to the degree to which it's a poorly written set of policies, is that it's full of internal contradictions. And that'll be worked out very painfully within the confines of people's private lives.